Hello, and thanks for tuning into my channel. In this video, I'm going to go over four tips that'll help you reduce lag and improve overall performance in AutoCAD. Before I get going, I'll just let you know that I'm using GSTAR CAD for this demo. Everything I show you is 100% applicable to AutoCAD, however. Okay, so my first tip would be to separate your AutoCAD drawing into multiple smaller drawings. I have an example in front of me of how I'd separate like a medium to large size structural job. If I have a small job, I'd probably just include it in one CAD file, but as the drawings get larger, I definitely want to have multiple CAD files. So my general notes and typical details, that can have multiple, she multiple sheets, multiple layouts in one file, but each of my plans, I only want one file per plan. If it's a very large plan, I might have multiple sheets, but in general, I want each level each plan on a separate file and then when it comes to details you can separate them however you want but um for me it doesn't really matter how many drawings i use because i always make sure i have a good prefix in my my drawings i always make sure my x rest have a prefix to differentiate them and if i do that when i'm in the publish command i can select these all very easily and very quickly so even a drawing set with hundreds of sheets i can plot it um basically set it up in seconds and of course it'll publish in the background that might take a couple minutes a few minutes but yeah if you're um if you have basic organization skills you can pull this off quite easily so my first tip would be use multiple smaller drawings instead of one larger drawing okay so tip number two is proper xref management so xrefs especially pdfs and image files really slow drawings down if you have a lot of different DWGs XREFed into the same file, that can create a lot of lag as well. So going back to my last tip, if you separate your drawings, that's probably going to mean that you're going to have less XREFs attached per each drawing. So the two tips kind of go hand in hand. If I have to use like a large X XREF like this, which I sometimes do, sometimes I just mark up over top of XREFs, um, I'll try to make sure I have only one large XREF per each file. So I'll show you something I do as well. If my logo or my client's logo is quite simple, I'll just go ahead and do it up in CAD. And if I do that, that means I don't have to attach an image file to each title block within the drawing or the drawing set. So that's another little thing you can do if you have the time and your logo isn't too, too complicated. So tip number two would be XREF management, either avoiding XREFs or limiting the number of XREFs per each drawing. And even sometimes drawing the XREF in CAD just to eliminate it from the drawing itself. My third tip pertains to wipeouts. So wipeout, you probably know what it is. When these are in your drawing, as you get more and more of them and the polygon count of each wipeout object increases, it slows your drawing down more and more. This is especially a problem with uh, drawing conversions. For example, a vector works or ARCHICAD drawing that's been converted to a DWG. These drawings will perform really, really slowly. And a lot of that is due to the wipeouts. And sometimes I like to call these silent killers because if you turn, turn your wipeout frame variable to zero, you can't even see that the wipeout's there unless you happen to stumble across it like that, right? So for your own standards, I'm going to show you a really nifty way to, to eliminate the wipeout slowdown issues. That's having a, a layer that you use as your wipeout layer. So you can see my little uh, break line block here that has this, uh, what I'd almost call a masking region, borrowing a term from uh, Revit there, tacked onto the back of it. So all this block is, of course, it has a little solid hatch here. And that solid hatch with that color I have a designated layer for it, a wipeout layer. And to get that to appear as a wipeout, I'll just go into my plot style table down to color 248, which is the color I was using for that wipeout layer. I have the screening set to zero. So screening, if it's set to 100, that's gonna appear black. If it's set to say 50, that's gonna be gray. As the number decreases, it becomes a lighter gray. And when it reaches color 248, it, virtu it behaves virtually the same as a wipeout. So I like this for two different reasons. One, I know where my wipeouts are because it's this, this uh, burgundy color. 
And two, there's less performance slowdown by using a wipeout layer as opposed to using wipeouts themselves. So when you're dealing with the drawing conversions I mentioned, like the vector works, the Archicad drawings, there is a way to make a Lisp routine that will delete all wipeouts, including nested wipeouts, wipeouts nested within blocks. I could dig it off my hard drive, but I'll have to get a, at least a couple of you guys to leave a comment and get me to actually do that because it'll take a bit of time. But yeah, I actually have a Lisp routine that will instantaneously get rid of all wipeouts. It will affect the look of the drawing, but if you're just using the drawing as a working drawing and don't care about how it looks, that wipeout Lisp would be the perfect solution to perform it, uh, increasing performance in a converted DWG file. Tip number four is workspace management. Various things in your workspace can slow you down. One of those things being the layers property manager. If you find this is causing lag, uh, the obvious solution is to just close it. Another thing is the, the ribbon. If you don't use it, you can close it by simply typing ribbon close at your command line. If you want it back, just type ribbon. The tool palettes, I don't use them, so I don't want to go too far into it as far as explaining that, but the tool palettes can cause lag. In my experience, the tool palette probably causes less lag than the ribbon. So if you're choosing between one or the other, um, maybe the tool palette is best if lag is your biggest concern. But I don't think you need both of them. So if you have a tool palette and a ribbon, choose one or the other. The last thing I'll mention is AutoCAD's new insert command, which I can't really demonstrate live in GStarCAD because GStarCAD's dialog is virtually the same as what's what AutoCAD calls their classic insert command now. So this dialog, you insert your block, it's closed, it's done, but the new AutoCAD command, it makes a window come up and that window stays. And I found that window causes more lag than anything I've discussed so far in tip number four. So I have a video on my site that will show you how to switch the command alias for I, the shortcut for insert, to classic insert, and that will prevent that one window from coming up because I'll, although it was neat, I didn't really find much use for it and the lag it caused just absolutely was not worth it. Before ending this video, I just wanted to add one bonus tip onto the end of it, that being transparency. This will only apply to people using older computers, older versions of AutoCAD, and in some cases, GSTAR CAD. So with GSTAR CAD, I found that the transparency while I'm drafting doesn't have much of an effect on performance, but when I'm trying to plot, it starts creating some problems. So I have transparency on when I'm drafting just to differentiate my hidden lines or my uh, more faint lines a little bit better. But when I plot, I leave transparency off. So the workaround to using transparency is using screening, similar to how I use screening for my wipeout. I use screening to make my lines lighter instead of transparency. But the catch to screening is that it blots out whatever objects are behind it. So that means that your draw order becomes more important compared to if you're using transparency. I also find that the, the quality, the look of the drawing, if you get it right, if you get your draw order correct, looks better with the screening. So my, my fifth tip, which is more of a bonus tip, is transparency. But I think for most people, the first four tips are gonna be much more applicable. So that about sums up everything I wanted to cover in this video. For me personally, throughout my career, the first three tips are by far would have helped me reduce lag the most. That being using multiple smaller drawings instead of one large drawing, XREF management, and dealing with wipeouts. So I know a lot of viewers will be watching this video and thinking, yeah, these tips are good, but you know, they kind of have to be implemented beforehand. You know, you can't exactly just change your standards at the snap of a finger or a, what if you're dealing with a bad file you receive from a client or a consultant, you know, it's a you're kind of stuck with it and a lot of this stuff won't work. So regarding bad files themselves, I think that would need its own dedicated video to cover that topic because I think there's AutoCAD lag in general based on standards, AutoCAD setup, and then lag created from the drawings themselves. So the only tip I cover here that's kind of remotely close to being something that would help in that situation would be the wipeouts. But uh, there's a few other things I'll just uh, briefly touch on. You could um, try copying and pasting the geometry into a different CAD file. You could experiment with something called export layout. And of course, there's if, if you're getting bad drawings from a client or a consultant, 
but they're consistently bad. They're the same, same layers and all that. You could actually make a Lisp routine to clean them up in, in theory. But yeah, to cover all the nuances of dealing with bad CAD files, that would require its own video onto itself. So that's, I'm not gonna get any, any further into it in this video. So anyways, I hope the tips I covered were helpful for you and uh, thanks very much for watching.